Brogdon. Sabobona! Sabobona is a Zulu word, it means I see you. And it is the very biggest difference between what used to happen in online marketing and what happens now in social media, the opportunity to see the people around you. That's the biggest difference. The biggest difference is that before, we would just be able to stick out our advertisements and find people via that. Now we have the opportunity to see, read, understand, and think about what people are saying around us. Before I came out on stage, of course, besides watching the video, uh, watching Jim Strip, I was... Anyone else a little nervous? <laughs> How far were we going to go? I was curious if Jen Blue was an underwear choice as well, but... <laughs> it might just be me. I learned that there's a, uh, a, con a fight between who's the cooler row, the second row, or the first row? Going on on Twitter, second row is only representing. <laughs> Uh, if you checked Twitter right now and search uh, twitter.com and if you put up the Gen Blue hashtag, what you would find is that several hundred people just said hello to you from all over the world. Reykjavik, Iceland, from someone's bedroom in the UK, a little different, <clears throat> and from elsewhere. Because that's what's going on. We are wired together. We are connected. What do we do with this? Hint, not sell right away. That's the trick. Uh, I wrote a book called Trust Agents with a guy named Julian Smith from Montreal. Uh, we were very fortunate for timing to hit the book about trust at a time when trust went to its lowest numbers. Uh, what we found is that what people didn't understand the most about social media wasn't how to pronounce Twitter, uh, but instead <laughs> how to use social media to do what we already know how to do at cocktail parties, which is one of the first things Jim said in his introduction. He said that we already know how to do this. So anybody in the room who isn't necessarily you know, down with the big blue bird or whatever, it's okay. You know, if you don't really know the difference between what Justin Bieber did, does and what other people are doing, it's okay. Our backgrounds all are in reaching people and building relationships. And our backgrounds are in helping people make a decision. That's a really big decision. I mean, it's right up there with marriage and getting a tattoo. <laughs> I think. Uh, by the way, before I go any further, I, am, I have absolutely zero experience in real estate except that I have been living in real estate for 40 years. I came home from a hospital 40 or so years ago, and there was a house there. And ever since then, I've been in the house for most of my life, or airplanes on the way back and forth to my house. I learned about real estate from people like Maya Caveza, from Chris Smith, from Jeremy Blanton. and I, there's all these people here that know that part of things. They run projects that help you understand these kinds of things. But I don't trust. What we do with the social web is we learn how to be one of us. We learn how to make relationships. The most important thing you should be thinking about is what to do in between offering people and selling. Because I don't really know the stats on how fast we turn over our homes, but it's not super fast. And you can't really tweet about that every single day, it turns out. So you do have to talk about your lunch in between. You have to take photos of the sushi. You have to take photos of strange people that you see, uh, and you have to look for serendipity. So I'm gonna blaze through just a little bit of what the book is about, just so that you have an understanding of what I mean when I say trust agents and what that meant. And by the way, it wasn't meant for real estate agents, but of course, with the word agent in the name, real estate agents ended up being one of the number one buyers of the book, so thank you. Um, <laughs> I make a dollar forty a book, so I'm not really pushing it. I don't care if you buy it. Um, the first thing we talked about was make your own game. And what we said when we, when we talked about that was, how do, you, how do you do something different that wasn't done before? And past things you've had Tony Robbins here, we talked to you, reach higher. What we taught you is, the game that existed before doesn't have to be the game that you play. The rule sets that are in place aren't necessarily the ones you have to follow to build the relationships you need to build. You just have to choose what your game is going to be about. We'll talk a little bit about measuring because score is a very important thing in games, isn't it? Some sense of feedback, basically. Second thing in Trust Agents was talking about being one of us. And this is probably the most important thing for realtors and professionals to think about, is how do you be one of us to that community? One of the things is to what we call to be there before the sale. How vitally important is it to be there before you need to sell something, to be the known person, to be the go-to guy in all these communities, 
long before they need to buy something. That's where it becomes important. The person who knows the person who knows how to do that thing, right? We have this in so many different ways. You know, I, I had a sink problem. You know, everything in your house should just run forever. I thought that was the, the plan. You know, it's okay to change the litter uh, for the cat. But other than that, you know, everything else should just kind of run. And lo and behold, my sink collapsed, and I don't really know what you do with that. There's just a big hole. Uh, I thought, well, I'll just use this sink. <laughs> Not especially handy, FYI. I was very, uh, I was very envious of this, the uh, conversation of, you know, a hand, you know, a script in one hand and a hammer and paint in the other hand. And all I was thinking was, I would just have the script and I wouldn't even be good at that either. Huh. So one of us is understanding how to be there before the sale, how to be at the elbow of every deal, how to be that person in the, in the organization that, that builds those kinds of relationships. We talked about something called the Archimedes effect. Think about this, every time you send an email to answer somebody's question, you're answering <coughs> one to somebody's question. Every time you turn that into a blog post, you potentially answer that question for millions of people. Why would you work so much harder to try to get relationships going when you're answering really difficult questions for people, when you could answer it on something like a blog, give or take all the restrictions and requirements and disclosure you have to make. Archimedes is just the idea of leverage. Give me a lever long enough and I can move the earth. Uh, which we accidentally called the Archimedes principle, but that turns out that's some other thing. The math people got all mad, so we had to change it. <laughs> Luckily, there's not many math people. <laughs> <laughs> this has nothing to do with anything, but does anyone else have like self-professed ADD in the room? We all do, right? Because we all have uh, Twitter and things, and we all have Angry Birds and uh, iPads. I'm so amazed by how many of you guys have iPads. It's really freakish, uh, because I go to a lot of tech conferences and they don't have as many as you do. And I've, I've just really decided that it's either to do all the cool Jet Blue learning stuff you can do, or to play Angry Birds. Uh, because when you play that on a 3-inch phone, like my phone, you know, it's kind of like this. But when you play it on an iPad, it's like an Olympic sport. Those of you who don't know what Angry Birds is, this will be over soon. Yeah. The ADD thing, though, how many kids with ADD does it take to change a light bulb? Let's ride bikes. <laughs> and like I said, this has nothing to do with anything, but I once got a cease and desist letter from the ADD Association of America. Please don't do that joke, it's really insulting to people with ADD. And I wrote back, oh, like, you'll remember this next week. <laughs> And then I can see. <laughs> the last couple of things with trust agent, one is to be agent zero. There is this notion that we need to be building a strong network. Well, if you're making a network of all realtors, well that's great, except that you can't just sell houses to each other, the math doesn't work, again with the math. Uh, you need to make relationships with other people. You also need to make relationships with people in different geographies in case yours gets depressed and you decide you need to go somewhere else. Uh, you also need to make relationships with people from other uh, verticals in different industries so that you can build a better relationship. Robin Dunbar had this theory that there's 150 connections we can have in our, in our mental social network, not like on Facebook, because that number is 5,000. Uh, and in this, to understand 150 people you should connect with, we came up with the idea that what if you found a, a diverse enough group of 150 people, well then you kind of have something. Uh, Next to last thing we talked about was the human artist. You have to work with the human side of what you're doing for business. If you wouldn't sell to your parents this way, then don't sell to your people that way. If your email newsletter comes from please don't reply at oh god don't send me email back .com, <laughs> that's a hint to the people receiving the newsletter that you don't care about them. That's a hint. Uh, second, if your email newsletter starts with having trouble viewing this, click here to view it in a browser. Uh, I've done a survey of all of my mom, and she has never sent me an email that starts like that. It turns out it's not very personal or personable. This is what human artistry is about. Human artistry is different than sandwich artistry, which is what helps you lose all that weight. Uh, human artistry is about, I'll, I'll keep going faster. Uh, Human artistry is about helping people build relationships and, and do it in a very human and relationship sustainable way. The very last thing we talked about was building armies, and that is what Jen Blue has done so well, Caldwell Banker. You have so much pride in what you've done, and you have so much relationship opportunity amongst yourselves through the learning thing, through the social networks, and through the exterior types of social networks. 
My business started something called thehiproof.com. I, I had a hand in it. It's a, it's a learning online site for real estate professionals. These kinds of social networks that aren't just inside of Facebook, these kinds of opportunities to grow are how you build armies because then you expand and, and, and grow the kinds of people you build relationships with to learn. I wanted to give you just some takeaway ideas to think about with regards to how you use social media to build your business. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's crap. That's an acronym. Uh, an acronym. Uh, C for connections. One of the most important things you should be using your social network for is to build connections, relentlessly building connections. R is referrals. You fully understand the value of a referral. If you have not been working hard on using these new social and online tools to get referrals, it's like you're throwing away money. Because that's where the biggest, biggest meat is in getting social networks to do what they do, referrals. Because not everyone's gonna buy a home today, but if you had a great experience, then of course you're gonna pass it on. A book for your homework is called The Referral Engine by John Jantz. Great book, very much worth it. The A is for awareness and attention. That's kind of two, I get it, but you know, pick which one you like more. Um, the A for attention means people's attention is one of the most valuable currencies we have right now. If you're screaming, hey, look at me, hey, look at me. Um, do you ever have this, uh, parents in the room? Parents of younger people, for especially? Mom, 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 mom. And you just, you know, your hands kind of do that wobbly thing in front of them? <laughs> And you scream, what? Did that one last nerve you have? Um, that's what it looks like when you're screaming about your listings. Uh, and instead, you can maybe do some relationship building in between. Because once you have that attention, you need to use it wisely. It is a valuable currency, and it's worth more than money. Turns out it's also something you can get with other uh, levers than what you use money for. And then P was presence. This is, see, I told you it spells crap. Presence is the idea of being present on these various social networks and learning how to, how to leverage them. Uh, there's actually 600 million users on Facebook at this point. So it's a huge, vast number. It turns out, though, they're not there to look for listings per se. They're there to kind of interact amongst their family. The number of growth in every single day right now, 740,000 new people a day join Facebook. Most of them the age is 31 to 60, most of them females. The thing is, their gateway drug is pictures of kids. So unless you put the kids in front of a house, um, you have to really keep working on it. <laughs> it's a clever sales tactic, though. Nice baby. <laughs> Walk up curb appeal right there. And then I think, just to end on, on something, because I have two minutes and 26 seconds left. When you're at these events and when you have the opportunity to meet and network and all that, besides just doing the business card ninja trick, do you ever do this or you go to like the chamber deck and you like flip your business card into the stomachs of people coming towards you? To <laughs> Here's a magic trick. Um, most people don't take those cards home and put them on their shelf uh, next to their uh, autographed picture of Lady Gaga. Um, they go on a little round filing cabinet. Um, Get their cards and then start doing research. Start building your own, what you might call, social CRM. Start looking at the person's card that you collect at an event and start finding where they are on the social networks and connect with them everywhere that you can without being creepy. <laughs> Maybe don't follow them on the match.com. That would be, be a little awkward. Uh, and you know, Nick at HarleyLovers.com. You don't have to join the site, it's okay. But other than that, try to find them where they are and build your relationships where they are. That's, I think, what's most important. In, in writing a book, by the way, one of the strangest things about it is it reminds me of the whole experience of social media. There's something strange that we're doing nowadays more than ever before in our time. We spend a lot of time looking down at our digital device. If you wander the hallway here, you can just see people smashing into walls and things like that. <laughs> There's a really famous YouTube video of a woman doing it, walking into a fountain. It's kind of laugh out loud funny, even though you know she's probably going to look hurt. Because you just know that experience. And, and by the way, it makes elevators so much more appealing because you can just pretend you're looking at your phone. You don't have to say anything to the person. You don't have to wonder who made the smell. You just... You know, Mobile devices have taken over our lives. If I owned a restaurant or if I had the opportunity to advertise in restaurants, you know where I would do it? 
between your table and the bathroom. Because every single human alive on the way to the bathroom now sneaks their phone with them like they're sneaking smokes. <laughs> Someone might have tweeted me while I was having my lasagna. My very last words. This is what you're designing for, not the giant big site. So when you're making your web presence known, make it for the little tiny screens as well as the big. I'm Chris Brogan. Thank you so much for your time.